Last week, the UK experienced a little bit of a cold snap. In Durham, for example, temperatures were below zero for a lot of the last week, Monday to Friday. And this wasn't record breaking, but it is as low as we've seen so far this winter. And you know what? We knew it was coming with weather forecasts talking about Arctic winds in the week before. So last weekend on this video, I set myself a little challenge to report back to you on how our heat pump has performed in the cold snap. Have we stayed warm despite the cold weather? How much does it cost to run a heat pump during a cold snap? What is the reality of an air source heat pump during sustained cold weather? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk you through how we got on. Well, first let's start with some context. A week in isolation doesn't necessarily give you all you need to know about how heat pumps work. And the coldest weather is the hardest time for air source heat pumps. There's less heat in the air. Uh, there is more risk of the heat exchanger frosting up at the back and a house needs more heat to stay warm. This is about as hard as our heat pump will have to work over a 12 month period. It will be expensive to run. It will use a lot of electricity. And this week, a gas boiler might have been cheaper to run than a heat pump, even though a gas boiler would have used loads of gas to keep a house warm as well. So in this video, we're gonna do the maths and work out how it went overall compared to a gas boiler and compared to the rest of the year. I'll try and give you the context of efficiency and costs more broadly, either time of the cold snap as well. To do all this, I'm gonna use the data from the two meters that are linked to our heat pump, the heat meter and the electricity meter, as well as an app that I use all the time, one of my more frequently used apps, which is called Octopus Watch. And that gives me an indication of our electricity rates each day from the Octopus Agile tariff. So let's get into it. How did we get on this week? Obviously, we'll start with Monday. The temperature on Sunday night through to Monday morning had got down to minus three overnight. And as we woke up on Monday morning, the temperature was minus two. Okay, so Monday morning, the weather app says it's minus two outside. Just been out for a run with Asher. Um, let's see what, how the heat pump's doing. Okay, so the temperature actually dropped a little bit overnight. Uh, it says it's minus 1.5 outside, says we're looking for 19. And it says the current air temperature is 18. I'm kind of okay with this for now. Um, I'm at work today and Esther's away at the moment, but maybe tonight before I say it's back, I'll up the weather conversation curve a little bit so that it doesn't drop overnight again. We'll see. I'd taken a meter reading around the middle of the day on Sunday, just after I'd made the last video. And then again on the middle of the day on Monday. Over that 24 hour period, the heat pump had delivered 105 kilowatt hours of heat and we'd used 38 kilowatt hours of electricity, which means we had an efficiency of a COP of 2.76. Over the day, our average rate was around 19 pence per kilowatt hour. So the cost to run our heat pump and keep us warm on Monday was seven pounds, 22 pence. Okay, so the lower efficiency then for the rest of the year, but we were nice and warm but not necessarily that cheap. Okay, so I've been a bit thick, got back in from work, making a coffee, went out to take the recycling out whilst I was doing that. And then on the way back in, I've not closed the back door properly. So the temperatures drop loads. Maybe the data from today, Monday, is gonna look pretty, pretty bad. Anyway, we'll get it back up to 19 and then everything will be okay. Oops. So because I've been a bit thick, I decided to reset the metering and took a reading just before bed on Monday night. Um, so over Monday afternoon and evening with a slightly cracked open back door, we used a further 14 kilowatt hours of electricity to deliver 39 kilowatt hours of heat to get us back up to that 19 degrees. This was a cop of 2.79 and another £2.66 costs for that 10 hours in the afternoon. But on to Tuesday. Overnight, Monday to Tuesday, it got down to minus three again, but actually during the day on Tuesday, it was up at three. So a pretty cold night, but maybe quite a normal January day. 
Um, Tuesday morning, um, we managed to get back up to 18 and a half from me leaving the door open, a little bit open last night. Um, and yeah, it's been negative overnight, zero degrees outside right now. So how did the heat pump do here? Well, over the 24 hours from Monday night to Tuesday night, we used a whopping 48 kilowatt hours of electricity to deliver 123 kilowatt hours of heat. This had a coefficient of performance of 2.56, which is the lowest so far this year. And that's a heat pump working really quite hard. On Tuesday, our electricity rates from the Octop Octopus Agile tariff were just over 20 pence. So this cost us £9.67 for our heating and hot water on Tuesday the 16th. Overnight on Tuesday, the forecast was for a cold one again, getting down to minus five just before dawn. Waking up on Wednesday, it was clear it had been colder. The heat pump had managed to keep us pretty much at 19 degrees C overnight, and the forecast for the day was to get to about zero degrees or maybe just about one degree. So really quite a cold day. Okay, so it was minus four overnight, maybe minus five. It's minus four now outside. I wonder how the heat pump is doing. It says minus four and a half. It says it's doing 18.5. So it's basically getting to what we want it to. So a heat pump can still work at negative temperatures. That's pretty cool. But it will be using significant amounts of electricity. So today's going to be the worst day, I think, for how much electricity we're going to use. I think we're going to use... Uh, it's gonna be around maximum around zero, maybe one degree. So we could use 50 kilowatt hours of electricity. We shall see. But at least Ash is nice and warm. The app says it's using like 2.5 kilowatts at the moment. Well, the house is, the heat pump are using a lot of that. Over that 24 hour period, having been down to minus five overnight, we used 51 kilowatt hours of electricity for our heating and hot water and that delivered 122 kilowatt hours of heat. So that's an efficiency or a COP of 2.39, which is a new record low efficiency for, for me recording over the winters over the last two years. So this much electricity on Wednesday would have cost us 21 pence per kilowatt hour. So similar to Tuesday and a total of just over 10 pounds and 25 pence. Okay, Wednesday night. Um, that's probably the end of the cold this day. It's I think it says it's minus four outside right now, um, and it's been pretty much negative all day. So um, yeah, I think you can see from the efficiency that this has been a tough day for heating with a heat pump. But we're still nice and warm. It's 19 degrees in here. Um, yeah, bedtime. Okay, through to Thursday. That was another cold day and the heat pump delivered this exactly the same amount of heat as Wednesday, 122 kilowatt hours, but it used one kilowatt hour less electricity. So an efficiency of 2.44. Our electricity rate was a little bit lower on Thursday, maybe because it was windier and electricity, therefore making electricity cheaper. So we paid 17.7 pence per kilowatt hour and our costs on Thursday were eight pounds 85. Morning, Thursday morning, week's going so quick. Anyway, um, it's minus three outside na right now and the heat pump is lifting our house to 19 degrees. So we're nice and comfortable and it's using loads of electricity to get there, but hey, that's okay. People were using loads of gas if they had a gas boiler. So um, looks like it's gonna be cold again today and then it'll start getting milder tomorrow before being really probably unseasonably mild unseasonably mild by Saturday but we'll see I'm happy Friday was cold again but it was starting to get a little bit warmer the heat pump delivered slightly less heat to keep us warm 107 kilowatt hours and it used quite a bit less electricity so only 38 kilowatt hours uh, for our heating and hot water on Friday so that's an efficiency for the day of 2.84 Electricity on Friday was even cheaper um, and this cost us 16.9 pence per kilowatt hour. So our costs for Friday were £6.42. Okay, Friday morning. Um, it's still cold now, but it's going to get warmer this afternoon. Um, but overnight, how have we done? It's actually 
warmer here than we're asking it to be. So nice and warm in the house this morning. Um, and by tomorrow, I think it'll be using much less energy to keep us warm. Great. I'm going to carry on briefly into Saturday and Sunday. I'd mentioned the weather forecast was due to get milder again. And on Saturday, we had an average temperature of around 5 degrees C. Sunday, 7.6 degrees C. So on Saturday, the heat pump delivered just under 100 kilowatt hours of heat um, and used 32 kilowatt hours of electricity. So an efficiency just over 300% at a cop of 3.04. Electricity rates were 16.22 pence per kilowatt hour. So our costs were five pounds, 19 pence. Then on Sunday, the heat pump delivered 76 kilowatt hours and used 20 kilowatt hours of electricity with an efficiency of 3.75. Our electricity rates on Sunday were even lower at 13.95 pence per kilowatt hour. So the heat pump cost us only two pounds 79 to run on Sunday. So that's the full week. Some fairly low temperatures, I think down to minus five overnight in Durham at some point and a heat pump working hard for five days straight. So what do I take away from this? Monday the 15th to Friday the 19th, we used 238 kilowatt hours of electricity at a total cost of 45 pounds. This kept us warm with internal temperatures at, at what we wanted at around 19 degrees C for, for most of the week. And in keeping us warm, the heat pump delivered a total of 618 kilowatt hours of heat. So an overall average COP of just under 2.6. So this is low efficiency for our heat pump. Over the last 12 months, we've averaged a COP of 3.39. So overall, given, given heating for the rest of winter, spring and autumn and hot water over summer, we average significantly higher efficiencies. But during a cold snap, not so much. So what does it work out in terms of cost? If, if someone with a heat pump was using the rates from the UK's price cap, so around 29 pence per kilowatt hour at the moment, heating like we have this week would have cost around 69 pounds for that week. If we look at equivalent heating, so the same comfort from gas, 618 kilowatt hours of heat from a 90% efficiency gas boiler would have used 687 kilowatt hours of gas at the price cap rate of 7 pence 7.42 pence per kilowatt hour this is almost 51 pounds so around 18 pounds cheaper than the equivalent cost from a heat pump although our costs on the octopus agile tariff were actually about six pound cheaper than that as well okay so for five days this week the heat pump was working really hard and costing a lot of money to run quite a bit more money than an efficient boiler at price cap rates but less money for us on our smart tariff from Octopus Agile. How about CO2 emissions? Uh, if it's not running efficiently, then maybe the emissions are higher. Well, to deliver that much heat using average CO2 rates for the UK this year, and in the in context, the Northeast does tend to have clean electricity, but we're gonna ignore that. Our heat pump was responsible for around 50 kilograms of CO2 over that five day period. A gas boiler would have emitted 125 kilograms of CO2 um, and all the other emissions associated with combustion in a boiler. So last week, our heat pump was 60% lower emissions than a gas boiler. And again, let's give the context over the whole year. Assuming we delivered the same heat from a gas boiler, we would have emitted 2.76 tonnes of CO2 in a year. But with our heat pump, we emitted less than 0.83 tonnes. 70% less. And as the grid keeps on getting lower emissions with more solar panels and more wind turbines, this will just get better and better. Taking readings from our heat pump every day has allowed me to do a bit more analysis and plot some trends and uh, as the temperature varies. So what do we see? Well, plotting efficiency versus average outside temperature, we can predict how my system performs at different temperatures. So we can see that at minus two, we might expect a cop of around 2.5. At zero, 2.75. At five degrees C, 3.4. And at 10 degrees C, just over a cop of four. And if I'd been really thorough over the last few years, I would have a much bigger data set with some more accuracy. So many regrets, but I could try and take more data going forward and be more thorough. Maybe, we'll see. 
So next I've plotted my total home electricity consumption. Everything that we've used versus, um, everything we've used in the house versus outdoor air temperature. And this predicts for an average day at minus two, we'd use around 52 kilowatt hours, 45 kilowatt hours at zero, 29 at five degrees C outside, and just under 13 kilowatt hours at 10 degrees C outside. Kind of interesting. So what do you think? Our heat pump has averaged a cop of about 2.6 during the five day cold snap we've just had. But over the last 12 months, it's averaged around 3.4. Our heat pump would have been more expensive to run um, at tariffs with the price cap, but with a smart or variable tariff like Octopus Agile this week and over the whole year, but this week it was actually six pounds cheaper to run than price cap rates for gas. Even at low efficiency, the heat pump reduced our emissions linked to heating by 60%. Over a whole year for us, this has been more like 70%. So that is some reality of life with a heat pump during a cold snap. And guess what? We're still happy. We may have used a load of electricity, but we stayed warm with lower, lower emissions and with, with the Agile tariff, cheaper costs compared to a gas boiler. Okay, what do you think? Please do come back to me with any comments or questions about my experience this week.